next speaker we have coming up uh, to the stage is a refugee from Vietnam. She's also a North Pole and Antarctica marathoner, a desert ultra runner, a culinary tourist, and a collector of jaw-dropping moments. Please put your hands together for Lynn Nguyen. At the impressionable age of 17, I heard one of the most profound ideas that truly shaped my life. From someone whose initials were JC, he was wise, selfless, and trying to save humankind from a cyborg. In the movie Terminator 2, <laughs> JC, or John Connor, tells, tells Arnold Schwarzenegger that the future is not set. There is no fate but what we make for ourselves. So without our actions, there is no fate. It's not that fate doesn't exist, it's that fate is guided by our efforts. In 2011, I had the incredible opportunity to run a marathon in Antarctica. And um, as an eight hour marathoner, it's, it's amazing that I had this chance and was able to represent Canada. So how did it all happen? Fate. A few months prior to that, my friend Nicole was online uh, surfing the internet and she saw a contest by CBC and it was a nationwide writing contest. They had asked Canadians to submit their ultimate dream adventure and they would choose one winner and fund them $10,000 to go and pursue this adventure. Well, I won. <laughs> so fate is the path that is set before us, but it is our job to walk that path. And boy, did I walk. It took me almost nine hours to complete the 42 kilometers. So imagine my surprise when I came in ninth place. <laughs> but it was because there were only nine women. <laughs> so as I like to call it, I had my first ever top 10 finish. <laughs> and it sounds much better than saying that I came dead last. It was also fate that I happened to share a tent with a girl named Allison. And Allison said, you know, if you like this race, you should really try the North Pole. <laughs> so if I said, okay, universe, send me a contest. <laughs> and then it happened. <laughs> another contest, another $10,000. Minus 33, knee-deep snow, chilling winds, and a 10-hour slog. It sounds like I've just described a typical Calgary workday, but it was the North Pole Marathon. And the good news, five women. I was fifth, top five finish. So having completed, having completed a marathon at the South Pole and then a marathon at the North Pole, I became I officially became Canada's first bipolar runner. <laughs> and me and my big mouth, it was fate that I said to Ali, that was reasonable. And he said, if you thought that was reasonable, you should really try the Four Deserts. <laughs> the Four Deserts is a series of ultra marathons, 250 kilometers self-supported races in four deserts of the world. And I said, okay, universe, send me a contest. <laughs> and the universe responded. Well, Husqvarna responded. Um, the prize, $5,000 and an assortment of machinery, <laughs> which I promptly sold on Kijiji and to pursue my Four Deserts challenge. <laughs> so that is how I, a mediocre runner, with a marathon, with a marathon time slower than Oprah Winfrey, <laughs> I found myself running across Jordan uh, in Wadi Rum, blissfully happy, walking the path that fate had set before me and taking the steps to get myself to the finish line. But the series is called Four Deserts, not One Desert. And the path that fate had set before me ended. So I said, okay, universe, send me a contest. <laughs> and just like that, the next contest appeared. It was duct tape. <laughs> duct tape loved my proposal because I said, 
I'm just an average runner, but like your product, no matter what happens, I promise I will always stick to it. <laughs> I always wonder what would happen if I had called posted instead. <laughs> and that is how I got to continue my four deserts goal. The second desert was in uh, Gobi in China. This is the third desert. It's in Chile in Atacama Desert. Uh, this is day five of an 80-kilometer day carrying 20 pounds of gear and supplies. Finishing that race, I was invited to compete in what is the last desert. Antarctica is apparently a desert. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, so I got to run uh, with thousands of the cutest spectators <laughs> you've ever seen, and they were even wearing my team colors. <laughs> so I became the first Canadian woman to finish the Four Desert Series and I became the eighth woman in history to complete the series in one calendar year, and that's what they call a Grand Slam. <laughs> but remember what John Connor said, there is no fate but what we make for ourselves. I dragged my tired, scorched body across three deserts, my cold, limp body across Antarctica, all the while contemplating life and contemplating fate. So what do you think? Is fate the cold, soulless hand that guides us, the hand of living tissue over metal endoskeleton that wants us to succeed, or is fate the T-1000 that pursues us, forcing us into action? <laughs> I like to think that it's, it's Arnold. <laughs> so I hope I've shown you that our efforts our relentless tenacity is what will yield the results we want. Fate may present opportunities, but ultimately, it's our efforts that the determine the course of our lives. And to that end, come with me if you want to live. 